Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this new series on plant breeding. So we've been so uh, we've been seeing various other topics uh, under plant breeding technique. We have seen a uh, self incompatibility, mutation, and uh, mass selection and pure line selection. So right now the next topic is uh, pollination. Okay. So uh, today the topic is going to be about on self pollination. So uh, before going into self pollination, we'll just have a glance of what is pollination. So pollination is nothing but it's like a, a reproduction of uh, uh, male and female gametes. Okay. So botanically, it is like a, it is like defined as transfer of pollen grains from anthers, which is the male reproductive part of the flowers, to the stigma, which is the female part. Okay. So pollen from an anther may fall on the stigma of the same flower leading to self pollination okay that is when the reproduction happens within the same flask that is inside the same flower it is also called as autogamy or self pollination okay whereas when the pollen from an anther may fall onto the stigma of another flower okay that is two different flowers here on flower and here it is another flower so if it is happening inside the same flower it is called a self and whereas when it is uh, involving two other plants or two other flowers it is termed as a cross pollination or allogamy okay so as i already said that allo is different and gamy is reproduction so different types of uh, plants are involved and this leads to cross pollination okay so sometimes when pollen grains from an anther may fall onto the stigma of the same flower uh, sorry i pardon you sometimes the pollen grains from an anther may fall on the stigma of the anther flower of the same plant leading to gaitanogamy okay so uh, so you have a plant here and you have one more flower here and one more flower here the pollen grains get uh, fertilized into the stigma of the another flower but the same plant okay so it is called as gaitanogamy okay so if it occurs in the same flower it is called as uh, self and when uh, two different flowers are involved it is cross and within the same plant but different flowers it's called gaitanogamy okay so self pollination uh, self pollination is nothing but it is a transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma within the stem flower okay it is usually found in bisexual flowers okay uh, so in most of these species self pollination is not complete uh, um, and may cross pollination may also occur in uh, 5% so those are the plants who have uh, self pollination as their main source of breeding they will uh, also reproduce by cross pollination in a meager five percentage okay so this is just a fact actually so the definition is when the pollination occurring within the same plant that is as i already said it is called as self pollination so uh, we'll just will uh, will have to know some certain other terms when it comes to uh, self pollination okay the first thing is bisexuality bisexuality as the name as the name implements you have two sex okay one is male and female sexual organs present within the same flower so it is found in wheat rice groundnut etc so there there you have a bisexual flower you have the male you have the male reproductive part called anther and stamen and you have the female part so this is in a classical example of bisexual flower so you uh, it is found in a wheat rice and groundnut also okay so the next thing is homogamy so homo means the same okay gamy is reproduction so same reproduction so when when the male and the female sexual organs mature at the same time it is termed as homogamy uh, so these terms will be coming on and off and there uh, so you need to know what is this uh, term actually means so the next topic is cleistogamy uh, so cleistogamy is one such interesting topic uh, uh, because the reason is here flash does not open at all but self pollination is accomplished okay so without opening of the flowers when the self pollination occurs this phenomenon is called as cleistogamy so there you see uh, the flowers doesn't open at all it is like intact uh, okay while but when the flowers have get separated manually you could see the seeds inside it so the fertilization is already affected without the flowers being opened so it is mainly seen in plants like oats barley wheat grass etc so this is a classical example of uh, cleistogamy uh, this plant is actually chestnut uh, next is chasmogamy so chasmogamy is nothing but flowers open but only after pollination has taken place so it is completely contrasting to cleistogamy so in cleistogamy uh, the flowers don't open whereas here the flowers get opened okay so it is mainly seen in wheat oats and many other cereals etc 
Uh, so we'll uh, see what are the genetic consequences when the plants are being bred by uh, self pollination. Okay. So the genetic consequences of the self pollination will be that is plants will have a very rapid increase in their homozygosity. Homozygosity is nothing but similar kinds of genes or similar kinds of alleles, whatever you call. So therefore, self pollinated species are very highly homozygous in nature. So this one is one of the main genetic consequences of self pollination. And the second point is they do not show inbreeding dep depression. Very very important. Okay. So which kind of species shows inbreeding depression is it's always the uh, cross bedded plants. Okay. That is cross pollinated plants. And they also exhibit some considerable heterosis as well. So these are the words you should keep in mind while writing the genetic consequences of self pollination. That is, they are highly homozygous and they're not shows inbreeding and uh, shows heterosis as well. So uh, that comes to the uh, end of the topic. I hope you like the uh, lesson because uh, self pollination is actually very easier topic. But topics like Claystogamy, Gaitanogamy, and Glasmogamy can be really confusing and hope you and i hope uh, you should uh, recall these topics again and again okay so thank you for once more again uh, so i hope uh, i hope to see you in the next lecture thank you thank you guys